be live. Hello, everyone. Let me just make sure that we are all set and live in Facebook as well. We are fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Why don't you go ahead and throw in the chat where you're joining us from? I'm coming from uh, New Hampshire currently, just north of Boston, Massachusetts. We've got Lisa. Lisa, where are you joining us from? Archer, Florida, just uh, west of Gainesville, Gainesville, Florida, north central area. Fantastic. Well, thank you for joining us. Where about you? I know we've got, let's see, Wisconsin. We've got Maryland. I love it. Where else? We've got Arizona. Thank you for joining us. We're going to have an exciting session today. Looking forward to talking about digital marketing and how to grow your businesses um, on a local level, but obviously beyond that when it comes to internet marketing. Rock Hill, South Carolina. Oh, good morning. Yes, we're from Hong Kong, Sydney, Australia. We are oh. worldwide, Lisa. Isn't that exciting? That is so exciting. Yes. Jacksonville, very, Florida, very Michigan, Clearwater. Fantastic. And to all of our guests, our traditional business owners, welcome. Uh, my name is Jason Pellin, director of MA Web Centers, uh, a division of a major, major internet marketing company, uh, shop.com. And we're going to talk about that. But the most important thing we're going to do is we're going to speak to you as uh, business owners uh, a little bit about the marketplace, a little bit about how you can maybe offset some business expenses. We're going to talk to you mostly about how to increase revenue and decrease expenses by streamlining business practices, by taking advantage of what? Technology, right? Is such a, a, um, a hard thing for business owners to uh, realize today is how important digital marketing is, but also how to leverage it and you know how to make sense of it. Lisa, wouldn't you agree that many businesses struggle because they're just confused about everything that's out there. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much out there and it's confusing uh, where to start, where to go. Yes, very much so. Of course. And in the chat, we just saw, you know, chat GPT and AI. I mean, it just seems like yeah. every day there's new advancements and how do you keep up as a, as a business owner, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, you know, Lisa has a lot of experience. She's one of our top web center owners with us. Um, she also owns her own digital marketing agency, Blue Dove Designs. Now, Lisa, you've done that for nearly 20 years. Isn't that right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. 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 So you've you've had a couple of clients, I would imagine. Oh, hundreds. Hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> so here you go, folks. We've got a professional here. She has um, worked with hundreds of clients in almost two decades of experience in online marketing. So we're in for a treat. Um, but our job is to kind of just give you an overview uh, about, you know, digital marketing, the landscape, um, talk about some key services that you're going to want to pay attention to as a business owner. And then we're going to highlight some of the things that we offer and give you a demonstration of some of our tools to help you grow your business. I think that's a great use of our time. Wouldn't you agree, Lisa? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Looking forward to it, Jason. Fantastic. So, you know, we talk about digital marketing, but really the, the biggest thing is that um, there is an advantage in technology um, in that it gives you so much more opportunity and so much more exposure but everyone has that same opportunity. So it ends up becoming very competitive, right? It's a, it's a very competitive world in small business. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But when we talk about, you know, trying to stay in business nowadays, um, just to operate a business, we look at all of the expenses. We look mm -hmm. at things like, you know, administrative costs, whether it's legal or accounting fees, uh, technology updates, uh, purchases for maybe clients, equipment, office supplies, janitorial and break room supplies, uh, you know, food and beverage for around the office, clothing and apparel, signage. Uh, you know, I ran a sign franchise for a long time, and you wouldn't believe the cost of some of the signs that have to go out on these traditional brick and mortar, mortar businesses. Um, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars that go into signage, not just the graphics, but then the materials as well. Um, and of course, promotional products, software like point of sale and scheduling services, merchant service providers, and then beyond human resources and payroll, 
one of the number one expenses we find for small business is in their marketing and advertising budget. And I mean, it, we're, and we're not just talking about, you know, throwing an ad in the local telephone book anymore, the yellow pages, right? We're talking about websites. We're talking about search engines. We're talking about email marketing and maybe Google advertising and social media on top of maybe some local advertising that you have as well. Um, so one of the things that you can learn about as a business owner tonight joining us is the person who invited you to learn more about ways that you can offset some business expenses has access to an incredible shopping platform. Um, and what if you could take some of your traditional business expenses and some of that overhead and save money and potentially earn some cash back on expenses that you're already spending each day and each week just to operate your business, you know, from your favorite stores. And what we have is an incredible platform through shop.com. So the person who invited you on has an access to a platform shop.com, thousands of partner stores with millions of products. And we have our own hundreds of exclusive products. There's no cost to register. There's no membership fee, um, which is great. It's not another subscription type of service, but here's the key. Lisa, our customers earn cash back. So as a business owner shopping at many of our partner stores, thousands of stores that they're already spending money at, right, Lisa? Exactly. Yes. For I mean, supplies, for anything. Yeah. Yeah. They could be earning some cash back on the money they're already spending and they can still use the rewards if they have a, a reward credit card, or perhaps they've got a reward card through a certain um, store. They have get certain coupons and deals. They still get those. This is an added benefit. And you can see, you know, we're not going to put a thousand logos on here, but some business related stores that might be like Office Depot, Office Max, Staples, perhaps Home Depot for building supplies. What about travel expenses and hotels.com? How about things like um, a print and copy through maybe FedEx or uh, Groupon or many other opportunities? So talk to the person who invited you and they can help you set up a free account whereby you shopping can help, you know, almost like rebate some money into an account for you that you can either cash out or you could redeem um, for future purchases, which is nice. So that's the first thing we want to do is help people save money. And I think, Lisa, you'll agree that, you know, the cost of doing business today is growing exponentially, right? Oh, it is. It is growing exponentially. And anywhere you can save um, definitely benefits the, your bottom line. Yeah. And, and of yeah. course, you know, you want to, you know, pass as much as you can on to your customer or client, but they're struggling as well. So this is just a nice way to maybe save some money uh, on things you're already spending. But yes. through this platform, we do have some business services. Um, we're going to talk mostly tonight about digital marketing services, but we also have merchant services uh, here in the U.S. and Canada where you can uh, uh, get a rate quote on cutting down some credit card transaction processing fees. I know that's another fee that gets added on uh, to the business expenses. So we've got a great company um, through Payrock and iTransact that you can get more information on. We have our own on-site tech team if you have any technology needs and other uh, ways that you can um, grow your business through different partners that we have, save some money, but also um, add to your you know, your existing suite of services to help you run your business. And you can find that through our shop.com uh, shop business landing page. And the person who invited you can certainly help you locate that and get some more information. Um, you know, but when we look at the amount of money spent on uh, digital marketing, the average U.S. business spent $24,000 on digital marketing right? $2,000 a month on digital marketing. And of course, that goes over a lot of different types of services. And we'll break some of those down. But, you know, you look at that budget, that's a lot of money going out. You know, are you getting a good return on your investment? And of course, the market has changed. Um, so a lot of people think, you know, what is digital marketing? It, it's simply marketing of products and services using digital channels, right? Online internet channels, uh, whether it's a mobile apps, it's email, it's a website, it's search engines, it all falls under the umbrella under digital marketing. But Lisa, why don't you talk to us a little bit about 
you know, his, in history, you know, 30 years ago, what did it take to run a business versus today? Ah, uh, well, it was a much easier in terms of marketing. Um, you run your business, you might place a yellow pages ad, put some ads in the newspaper, and then there was traditional word of mouth referral marketing. Um, so there wasn't a lot of, uh, there wasn't a whole lot to do uh, today, though. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, you can see websites, domain and email, mobile optimization, SEO, search engine optimization, social media, search engine marketing, writing blogs, uh, getting good content out there, review sites, uh, such as Google reviews and, and Yelp and such, e-commerce and word of mouth. And then, oh yeah, you've got to run your business too. <laughs> you still have to run your business. You still have to run your business. Yes. So, so, I mean, if you think about that, Lisa, right now, business owners have to wear so many hats, right? They don't yeah. have to just run their business. They also have to be in charge of marketing and accounting and legal issues, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's overwhelming. It can be. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so we look at the business opportunity and we, and we realize how many businesses are here in the U.S.? And we're just talking about the U.S., but we know we've got partners uh, with us from across the globe. Um, you know, over 30 million small businesses here in the United States, only 64%. I think that's shocking that today in 2023, still um, almost a third don't even have a business website. And then we look at e-commerce, Lisa. 41% growth in e-commerce. And I think we saw a spike in that over the past couple of years, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely with, with the economy. Mm -hmm. For sure. People are, are, you know, they know the consumers are online. So a traditional business that may not have been uh, using e-commerce in the past now is looking at e-commerce, such as a restaurant. You know, 10, 20 years ago, a restaurant would never have thought that they would need e-commerce on their website, right? Right, right. It's so much more. Everyone's getting uh, used to doing that. It's the convenience factor too. Well, yeah. and, and 20 years ago, you couldn't deliver a pizza online, right? Yeah. You, no. Someone had to go to, to the restaurant, but now you can place the order and then go and pick it up and, and pay yep. as you go. So it really has changed drastically um, and very quickly, right? In the past uh, 20 years, 10 years, five years, and even this year alone with some of the enhancements. Yes. So 36%, right? A third don't have a website at all, but most are looking to improve their website performance, right? So, you know, everyone's looking for efficiency and value. So we look at uh, a comprehensive digital strategy and, and what's entailed. Well, we talk about websites and e-commerce, but also Google placement, right? Are you placed uh, high on the Google uh, search engine? What about social media such as Facebook, Instagram, you know, now TikTok? What about mm -hmm. content marketing? You mentioned blogging and maybe email communication, maybe text message marketing. And then merchant services tied into the e-commerce. Maybe there's credit card processing fees, you know, there's card swipers, there's, you know, chip readers. And then of course, loyalty programs. So when we look at uh, every single client, we always want to look at this robust program and an all-inclusive solutions that really will move the needle to help these businesses um, and maybe fill in some gaps. Maybe they already have a couple of these, but we want to help them fill in the gaps to make sure that they can improve. So it all comes down to simplicity, uh, synergy, accessibility. And it's not just, you know, small business. It's also, you know, self-employed individuals, solopreneurs, the, massage, the single uh, massage therapist, the, the web designer, Lisa, I'm sure that you've got a website. I'm sure that you're placed in the search engines, right? You're, you're a small business yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So everyone needs, needs this. Um, so why don't you talk to us a little bit about um, what makes a website work? Like what, from a design perspective, what are some things that are important for our business owners uh, to recognize? Uh, well, there's multiple facets for making a website uh, that works. Uh, one is branding. Uh, when your customers visit your site, there's a clear sense of your business, who you are. Um, making sure that that's consistent. Uh, is your design consistent with other marketing materials or advertising that you do? For example, brochures, business cards, that sort of thing. 
All right, great point, All right? So think to yourself, as a business owner joining us tonight, you know, recall and think back, you know, do you have a clear sense of branding that's consistent across all of your channels, including your social media, social media yes. and your website, social, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, even any images on your, your uh, email marketing, right? Having, having that consistent brand is important. Yes. Um, accurate content. Uh, customers expect it to be up to date. Um, and that includes your copyright at the very bottom of your page. If your copyright says 2019 and we're in 2023, that reflects badly and uh, people perceive that it's out of date. So is your content accurate and easy at, to update? And is it consistently updated? Right. Great question. Right. And I know you know, when you review a website, it might have like a, uh, a history of events, like what events have been happening. And if you look at that uh, historical, uh, maybe before and after photos or something or an event that happened and you see it was, uh, you know, 2022, it doesn't speak well that we're already in May of 2023, right? So you want to have uh, current events listed for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then user experience is really important. Visitors should be able to easily navigate and use your website. If it's not, they will leave. Uh, you have a very few seconds to make a, a, a good impression. So you want to ask yourself, is it visually appealing? Is it easy to use? Is it easy to navigate? Is it mobile friendly? Can you pull it up on your phone and easily use it? And can visitors interact with you? Uh, via email, message, or chat. Um. Yeah, you know, one of the one of the things that I'll tell you personally, and I'll just tell a, a personal pet peeve of mine is if I'm on a mobile website, and let's say it's a restaurant, I'm I'm traveling uh, now, um, you know, more frequently than I have uh, in the past couple of years. But I'll, I'll do a search, right? I might do a, a Google search for a restaurant. I want to try something out. I'll read some reviews, but when I go to the website, I want to check out the menu. And I'm on my phone and I go to click the menu and then wouldn't you know, it starts downloading a menu and a PDF to my phone. <laughs> and, and for me, it's just like a pet peeve. It's just not a good user experience. I just wanted to open up a page with the menu. Right. Um, and then, you know, I go and find an, I, I usually exit and go to the next search result and I go to another restaurant and it happens this, I, again. Um, and if I happen to be going back in that area, you know, I might have forgotten. I pull up the website, I click menu again, it downloads another version of the PDF on my phone. So, you know, that's what Lisa's talking about. Um, you know, is it easy to navigate and is it user friendly? Um, mm -hmm. So always think of the site visitor, not what's easier for you to manage, right? And I think yeah. you'd agree with that. Yeah, yeah. And then lastly, what about this, this one here? The lastly is your audience. It's built for both existing and potential customers. Um, you want to you want to dive into you know who are you trying to attract um, and making sure that your content, your imagery, uh, and everything is written for those different visitors. Yeah, I think a lot of times um, customers and, and clients that I've worked with, they're so eager to generate new leads and new business, so they're always focusing on that new client or new candidate um, to attract them to their services. And their, their content isn't written for an existing customer. Well, if your website isn't built for an existing customer, why would they ever visit your website, right? You're, you're, you've got an opportunity to maybe build customer loyalty, get them engaged with your products and services, um, maybe sell them additional products and services, stay top of mind. So yeah. there's a lot behind that where you want to make sure that you've got the content on your website written for, for both potential new leads, but also for your raving fans, right? And yeah. I think that's what you reference, yeah. right? Is that it's gotta be for different visitors. Yes. Um, yeah, it's gotta be for your target audience that you're trying to reach. Exactly, and I think maybe like a, a, a realtor, a real estate agent, yeah. they've gotta really focus on um, their segment. You know, Are they focused on residential properties? Are they focused on commercial? Okay. And if right. both, the one page that focuses on residential to, should speak to the reg, residential consumer, and the commercial property page has got to speak to the maybe the real estate investor, the commercial property investor or business owners, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. So all, all things to consider on what makes a website work and why it can be effective. So it's not just enough to have a website and put your name out there on the internet. You've got to take um, some consideration to strategy as well. So if we look at, you know, just an example, clear sense of branding, the content is easy to read. 
it's very visual. In this, in this case, the client's using um, stock photography, right? So if you don't have great photography, I would A, hire a photographer, hire a videographer, and in the meantime, use some stock photography that can speak to um, your audience. But then, of course, there's nothing better than having your images on your website. Yeah. Now, yes. this, this example, there's a desktop, there's a laptop, there's a tablet, and a, a mobile phone, a mobile device. So, you know, the website's got to be responsive to all of those devices because every visitor is different. And what we'll find is that there's such an increase in mobile traffic that you can't ignore the mobile display, right? Yeah. So, you know, business owners need a great website, Lisa, but that's not it, right? It, it just, it's like if you had a brick and mortar business in the middle of the woods, it may not do you that well because you need all of these other things, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, there's a myth of if you build it, they will come. And that's not, you know, you don't just build a website, put it out there and everybody just shows up. You've got to do some other work. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like social media, you've got to get the traffic, visibility on Google, uh, emails and domain email campaigns, uh, analytics, taking a look at your stats, your visitors, uh, secure hosting, support, uh, and the ability to make changes so that your content is always current. And, and when yeah. we look at this, the reason why a lot of businesses, I think, um, might not do these things is, um, one, either they don't realize it or don't know. Yeah. Two, they're fearful, right? They're afraid. They don't know what to do. And, and how to uh, take advantage of it. Some of them are too busy to do it. They don't have the uh, human resources or the technology resources to do it. Mm -hmm. um, they certainly don't maybe have the knowledge uh, base to do it, nor, nor the desire. And right. then of course the cost, every time they think of doing these, they think of dollar signs like, oh my goodness, now I need to do this. Or every time I go to make a change, I contact my web developer and it costs me a hundred dollars an hour or $200 a page or so what happens is that they don't stay consistent. They don't stay up to date because it's always a cost associated even to make some minor changes. So I think those are some things that might um, uh, business owners might be challenged with, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we look at traffic. You know, we look at brick and mortar. You're looking at real estate. You're looking at traffic on the, on the roadways. But, you know, on the internet, where are you found? How do you rank on search engines? How visible are you to your existing customer base? And do you have a strategy? Like you said, I think a lot of people just, you know, they go to a website, they, they build it themselves, they have someone build it and they say, yeah, I've got a website and they put their domain name on social media and their business card and, and that's it because that's all they have the time to do. But there's mm -hmm. so much more that goes into it. So one of the things that I would like to do, Lisa, is talk a little bit about search because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding on how search actually works. You know, people want to rank on Google or Bing, mm -hmm. um, yes. but they don't know really what it is. And they've got maybe some other companies that call them or contact them constantly for search work. So let's just break it down real easily so that our businesses can, can have a better understanding. The first thing is that we're going to break the search results page into three sections. One is advertisements. Right, so uh, yeah. Google advertisements are like paid billboards. You don't have to pay to be there. You gotta be willing to pay if someone clicks on your ad. So it is a pay to play model, but it's the first section. If someone's doing a search for a service or a product in that area, Google's looking at all of their advertisers and then ranking them based on their website, the quality of their website, and does it answer that person's question of what they're looking to um, research? And then they'll, they'll rate them on the advertising billboard. So it's gonna have the, the business name um, based on some keywords, but then it's also going to have a, an ad. It's gonna be written however the user wants uh, the, the site visitor to read. What are you looking for? We are your solution. So the first thing is the Google advertising section. Mm -hmm. The next place for local search is uh, our listings or our local maps listing. And I'll tell you that this is all related to Google My Business information. So, you know, one of the free tips, I know everyone loves free tips. One of the free tips I can give all of the businesses that are on here this evening is to make sure that you claim your Google listing. Yes. Go to Google My Business and then set up a profile. It's free. You'll have your um, hours of operation. You'll have your website address, your phone number. 
All of that is information that you can add. You're going to add some images. And also it allows people to place reviews for your website on this listing. And I'll tell you, this is a critical piece to your search ranking is how well put together this free Google listing is. So that's your freebie. That's your takeaway for joining us tonight is to make sure that you go and claim your Google listing. And of course, uh, we can help you with that um, if you have questions. But it goes beyond Google listings. There are so many other websites and directories that have information, and I find that this is shocking. Constant Contact surveyed over 350 businesses, and half of them came across as inaccurate. Either the wrong address, maybe the wrong uh, hours of operation, maybe the wrong business owner's name, and 49% of those businesses never even checked their listing. So you wanna make sure that you've got a cohesive, consistent message online with all of your listings, whether it's on Yelp or Angie's List or Manta.com or Dexnose and Google, um, there's a lot to it. So you simply just search your business and you can find all the places that maybe you're, you're listed out there on the internet. And that's another great uh, search engine tip is to check your local listings. And then below the map section is what we call the organic section, which is just the natural ranking. And this is where people really wanna be found. Your website uh, domain name is listed, um, various pages in your website might be listed. So if you really wanna own search and you wanna compete in your local market, you wanna try and maybe show up as an ad, you wanna show up in the maps and you wanna show up in multiple areas in the organic listing. You know, there's about 10 pay, uh, places of business that are on page one of Google. And if you can occupy three, four, or five of them, then guess what? You've got great market share when it comes to placement on Google search. And that is critical, especially if you're in a, uh, an area where you've got a lot of competition. If you're a restaurant and you've got three or four other similar types of restaurants, you want to rise above them. So search engine optimization is going to be a key to your success. Yes. So, Lisa, talk to us a little bit about why people might be considered uh, considering their mobile presence as well. Right? Um, well, uh, why is that? So 40% of people and in a site it takes too long to load. Um, they'll leave after two seconds is the research that I have found. 67% um, are more likely to purchase from a mobile only site. And last but not least, 74% um, are more likely to revisit mobile optimized sites. So you've got to, people are on their phones. They're on their phones on social media. They're on their phones answering emails. We use our phones on a daily basis. So uh, you've got to have it optimized for the, for the mobile device. Yeah, in my latest check, more than 70% of website traffic or internet traffic was done on a, a, a mobile device. So while it might look beautiful yeah. on a computer or a desktop, you really got to have your mobile representation cleaned up. Um, and I think a lot of it comes to this, I call it second and third screen phenomenon, meaning that people are, maybe they're watching TV or they're doing something else and they, and they, and they still, and they have their phone with them. Yes. Right. And they yeah. might have their, their laptop and their phone and watching TV or, so they've got all <laughs> these different devices um, and, and we laugh, but I found myself at yes. my computer on my email and my email notification went off and I instinctively grabbed my phone and checked my email on my phone while I was already on my email on my computer. That's how addicted to these devices we are. I've done the same thing, Jason. All right. I've done the same thing. <laughs> so, it, so it's critical that your mobile presence um, is cleaned up. Right? Yes. And, and then I mentioned reviews. Reviews, you know, everyone is checking reviews, whether it's a restaurant or a service. So you want to make sure that you've got um, uh, good reviews and you might have to solicit those from some of your, your clients. 88% of consumers read reviews. 
and 85% read up to 10 reviews. So not just doing a, you know, one or two, they're reading multiple reviews. 72% said it helps them um, make a, a decision and, and trust a, uh, a local business. But this is the statistic that gets me. 88% trust an online review from a stranger as much as a personal recommendation. And I think that is wild, right? In this day and age of maybe social media or just e-commerce, that people trust the reviews as if it was their friend telling them something similar. Yes, yes. Can I say, can I add something about, oh yeah, you're going to sure. talk about negative reviews. I was just going to mention that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, don't be afraid of negative reviews and don't delete them. Because people do trust reviews more when they see some some mixed some of the negative stuff mixed in. Personally, I will first read the reviews that are one star before I will read the ones that are five star. Why is that? Because I want to see how that business responded to that negative review. If they handled it well, then I take that as either a human error or whatever, but it it reflects on how that business handles those complaints because no business is perfect. Nobody gets everything right 100% of the time, but I always want to look at how did they handle that, that, that problem, that complaint. So don't be afraid of those. Respond to them. Absolutely. I couldn't yeah. agree with you more on that. Um, and of course, th there are some niche websites uh, geared in certain categories or industries that you want to make sure that you uh, are paying attention to. Uh, Yelp, Angie's List, TripAdvisor. Um, so make sure that you've got a listing there, but also know that as you have a listing, you may start getting solicited to pay for advertising on those sites. Um, I don't necessarily think that you need to do that for a premier listing. And that's something that you can look at in terms of your advertising budget and if it's an interest, but at least have a, a, a listing on these sites uh, to help. And the most important thing that you can do is ask your customers, ask your clients to review you on Google or Facebook or Yelp, because um, it will add to that. You, you don't want someone doing a search and only finding three or four reviews. If they see 10, 20, 30, 50 reviews, that's going to give you a better shot. So just ask them um, after they've uh, purchased a service, or you can email them, send out an email communication, maybe a text message. Um, but do your best to try and solicit these so that you can build up a, a database or a bank of great reviews for your for your website. Can I give a, a quick tip? A local jewelry store had a great tactic on this. I went in to get a battery replaced for my watch, and they said, well, you know what? If you will leave us a Google review, we'll give you the watch battery for free. So they replaced my watch battery. I gave them a Google review. They won out because they also got an additional review. So find something that you can offer something in exchange for a review so that you get that done right away. It was super easy on me and the customer and they, it helped them also. So. Right. And you, and you don't say, you know, if you leave us a good review, you'll get a battery. It's like any review. Exactly. If you just give us a any. review, give us a review. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great tip. That's a great I tip. Thought it was, I thought it was great. Can even do it on your invoices, right? Please leave us a review yeah. with a link or a QR code or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and I could do an entire training on uh, email marketing as could you Lisa. So we're just going to, you know, drive through a couple tips. Um, email marketing uh, a lot of people thought it was dead and gone, but I'll tell you, it is here. It's alive. It's a well. Um, if it didn't work, we wouldn't have Fortune 50 companies emailing us each and every day. So you just want to make sure that you've got a strategy <laughs> like anything, uh, a clear message, a, a great subject line, um, a single purpose for the email, and then timing, right? You can write it in advance and then schedule it. Um, but you also want to check you know, when they're getting open, when are people looking at it? Um, it seems like right now, Tuesdays at noon have a high open rate. Mondays, usually people are just getting back into the office, getting into the swing of things. It's a busy uh, time for them, but Tuesdays seem to be a good uh, time to get some opened uh, emails from you. And at least you're just getting into their inbox. So, you know, how can you add some local flavor? How can you target the audience? Like Lisa said with the website, um, the message should be written for certain types of um, audiences. In email, it's the same thing. You might wanna segment your list. If it was real estate, it would be residential versus commercial. If it was uh, maybe a, a, a landscape company, it's gonna be maybe it's my 
uh, landscape design clients or people that are interested in landscape design and water feature features and retaining walls versus those that need lawn maintenance, right? So you got to build up a database and make sure that you're sending them relevant communication, right? Yeah, right. So with, with all of this, what we do at MA Web Centers is we can help businesses and organizations increase revenue, decrease expenses, increase customer satisfaction, streamline business practices, increase engagement, and overall just marketing their business, right? Lisa, what, what do you love being a, an industry professional? You've serviced hundreds of clients. What do you and your clients appreciate the most about MA Web Centers? Oh my gosh, I could make a, a nice little list for this, but um, I love the web centers. I love the platform. It's so easy to maintain. It's secure. Uh, that's probably secure and it performs very well. Um, and it's it's just got a lot of features built in. I don't have to worry about it getting, getting hacked, getting errors. It's just, I love the ease of use. I just, I really, really love it. <laughs> and I've used a lot of different platforms. So I, I just, yeah, <laughs> I could and go on, but I won't. Obviously you've got a lot of experience, but yes. from yeah. your customer's perspective, your client's perspective, how do they feel about the tools as well? They are loving it. Um, they love the ability to do, to make their edits, to add, for example, a button and not necessarily have to call me for every little thing. Uh, and then I'm able to consult with them, do more consulting versus handling all the little nitty gritty things. They have more, they're more empowered to do more on their site and uh, they're excited. They're excited. They love it. So. So again, ease of use, that simplicity ease. is yeah. a critical uh, feature. Um, so We've got a couple tools that we're going to highlight. We thank you for, for being on. I did just put it in the chat, uh, both on Facebook and on our Zoom. If you own a traditional business, we'd love to know the name of your business. Um, you know, Throw it in the chat, kind of get a, a free uh, promo for your business there. And then we'll also go in and check it out. Make sure the person who invited you on can also promote your business on their social channels as well. We want to give you some love for joining mm -hmm. us. But we want to talk about some of the things that really set us apart um, that we provide. Um, I'm going to start with our email campaign tool because we were just chatting about email. We've got a very simple drag and drop email newsletter builder. So you can build out, you know, different blocks of content, whether it's, you know, one column or two columns or different rows. And then once you set that up, you can then add uh, various buttons or images or lines of text or bulleted items. And we brought it up earlier, but what I'm really excited about is that this tool has now engaged with um, the, the open AI platforms, which means that you can use uh, AI, for those that aren't familiar with it, it's artificial intelligence, where mm -hmm. if you, you can click on our magic ima image link and describe the type of image you're looking for. Maybe you don't have a stock photo, but you say, you know, I'm looking for a spring bouquet that has calla lilies in it. It's going to develop some options of what you're looking for. And if you don't see it in those four, four chases, you can you know, scroll through to find more or you can improve the description. You know, I'm also looking for roses and carnations or whatever, and it will create an image for you, which is incredible. And then of course, with text, it will actually write the email for you. I think, Lisa, where a lot of business owners uh, struggle is developing content. You know, they're not writers. You know, they're not writers and look for, for a lot of business owners, it's like looking at a blank canvas and they don't know where to start um, or to word things properly. So that's where AI can come in and be very helpful. Yeah. And it's beyond yeah. spell check. It's beyond grammar. It will actually, you write in a couple bullet points and it will write a paragraph for you. And then mm -hmm. you can change, you want it to be more professional sounding, or you want it to be more casual sounding. Um, the, the tool, you just click a button and it rewrites it for you. So I'm very excited about that new addition in our email campaign tool. Um, and then of course you can change the color schemes and links and everything like that. Very easy to use. And it's in our uh, website editor platform, which is great as well. Uh, we also recently had the addition of a QR code generator. So a lot of these QR codes are popping up everywhere, but now you have one stop where you can do the email, you can manage your website as well as you know, build a QR code. You can change the color of the code. 
Uh, you can change the size of the QR code. You can input your logo into the QR code. And then you can download that and put it on you know, other things like your invoices, your business cards, your signs. And then it'll direct people from that QR code from their mobile device to wherever you direct them onto say your website or to a, a particular landing page or social media. You can use it for anything. Um, so I love those little built-in uh, features because they're included. Um, they come along for the ride is, is what I like to say, right? Yes, yeah. So. I'm going to switch gears and talk talk about our website editor platform called Oasis. Um, and Lisa, jump in wherever you can. I know we're, we're finishing up here, but I did want our guests to see the ease of use of this editor. We had uh, our team put together a basic plumbing website. Um, in this plumbing website, we're logged into an editor. So it allows us to edit the website. As I scroll around, I can make very easy changes. So the first thing we'll do is change the text. You know, we specialize in all aspects of plumbing and are dedicated to giving uh, your fast, friendly, and reliable service. Well, I see that that is a misspelling. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna click it, and I'm gonna say, giving you fast, uh, friendly, and reliable service. Our plumbers are available at any time of day um, or night. And that's it, as simple as that. So, you know, a lot of times someone has to contact their de developer to make a basic change where they can do it themselves or someone from the company can log in and do it for them. Very easy to change text. Now, the other thing they can do is change images. So in this case, it's an image gallery. I click on this and it shows you that I can add it to my Instagram or we can add new images and we've got an entire library of stock photography, Lisa. Yes. Right? So yeah. search for the type of image you're looking for. And there it is, right? So you can add yes. these images or upload one from your computer. Very easy to do. Again, it's all point and click. If something about this image I want to change, I can click on here and I can remove uh, the link. I can replace the image. I can crop the image if I want to. So I don't need to go outside to another uh, image provider. It's all done within the software. That's one thing that I've loved. It's streamlined so much uh, by being able to do so much right within the platform versus having to go outside, edit it, reload it. It makes it so much faster. And it's an editor that we call WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. So as you make changes, you can see what it'll look like on the live website, which is nice once you publish it, um, which is different. You know, there's, you know, the number one website builder out there in the world today is still WordPress, right? We're going to bring that up. But when you try and manage WordPress, sometimes there's challenges because you have to publish it or go outside and preview it, see what it looks like, and then come back into the editor. So it saves time and it's, it's ease of use. Um, and then we've got other great little tools. You know, speaking of social media, you know, we click on the social media here and maybe this plumber said, you know what, we're going to start doing some YouTube videos. It's going to be like how to un unplug your toilet or how to change the trap in your sink or something. So we're going to add YouTube. They can click the YouTube icon, come down here and then simply add in whatever their YouTube address is. And now you can see that now they've got YouTube linked right here. So very easy to use tools to integrate with other things like social media. Uh, I think that's one of my favorite things that we have here um, for our widgets. Right? I think one of my favorites is the gallery. I love the galleries and the unlimited amount of storage. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Web storage is another another thing. Now, one of the things that you'll see is that there's some animation here. So it brings the website to life. It's got some animation and very easy to update that within the, the website. You can say, you know, I want a little bit of a zoom when people hover over it. You know, if you want it to wiggle or bounce in or come in from the side, um, all of those things are just a click of a button within the widget editor. So right here under pages, you have the ability to add as many pages as you want. We're not going to uh, you know, charge you for additional pages as you add them to the site. And then the most important thing is under each page, there's a settings icon and you'll see we actually have an SEO tool. So within the SEO tool, you can write your SEO or your search ad. You know, what do you want the title to be on the ad? What do you want it to say when people see it and it shows up in search? And what keywords do you want to be, uh, you know, found for? 
And this is not the paid section, but this is gonna give you a better chance of showing up in the natural or the organic section. And this yes. is all built into the tool. Now, businesses can do this themselves, or we also have search engine optimization packages where our professionals can go in there and do that for you um, based on some parameters that you set with us. So very robust. Um, you can also add in the picture. So if someone you know, puts your website onto Facebook, what is the picture that shows up? You can add that image here. So again, it's all drag and drop, point and click, something that anyone can do uh, yeah. very simply and easily. I love that feature, by the way, the social networks image, because uh, in other, uh, I haven't been able to control that previously. And it's nice to be able to, to say what I want to show up. Fantastic. Yeah, I agree. And then the widget library, we're adding more and more widgets all the time. Our developers are hard at work to make this the most cutting edge tool for businesses. And every business is different. There might be some features that a plumbing company needs that is different than what a, a doctor or a dental practice might need, um, or maybe a restaurant. So, you know, when we look at some of the uh, ideas like, you know, a, a restaurant menu, well, mm -hmm. the dental practice might not need a restaurant menu, Lisa, right? But a restaurant can update their menu here or Yelp reviews or business hours or an online scheduling tool uh, capability. So it's all here, you know, even Zoom integration for our online coaches uh, that are doing some online programs, they can plug right into a Zoom widget. So, so many things that are, you know, again, just drag and drop. If I want to add an image, I literally just drag it over onto the page and then upload the image that I want or search the category. And there it is, right? And then if I wanted to, I could actually resize it if it was too big, right? So very easy to do some of these things. And, and we get into e-commerce. If you are selling online, easy to manage. You mentioned blogging earlier. So there is a built-in blog as well. Um, and then also a little bit more advanced and our teams can help uh, businesses, but a personalization rule. Think of it as if this, then that, right? If I want a pop-up to show up on Father's Day because we're doing a special, we can have that set up. So on Father's Day, a pop-up shows up and offers maybe a coupon code. But then after Father's Day is, is done, it then goes away automatically. So it helps with various marketing campaigns as well, Lisa. Yes, yeah, yeah. All right. I love that it's just built in. Yeah, and I know you and I could spend hours on this because we love the platform so much, but we just wanted to give a, a quick demonstration of the capabilities of uh, the service. Um, beyond that, we do offer packages to help with social media management, um, online review management, reputation management, uh, Facebook advertising campaigns. We do search engine optimization uh, review with a business and then offer different packages uh, based on their needs. Uh, we manage Google advertising. Uh, and even content writing. So maybe AI is not enough and you need us to help build out a blog or build out an email campaign or write uh, content for a web page. We will also do that for you as well with professional writers. And then lastly, we do offer text message marketing campaigns for businesses. So we're seeing more and more businesses leverage uh, text message marketing as a way to promote their business products and services. Um, Lisa, any of these additional services that you think would be important for a business to, to leverage? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> depending on your needs, depending on your industry. Um, I, I love that there's so many options and so many, uh, so many uh, services to, to really support and help the small business owner. Yeah, and like you said, we'll meet you where you're at. So if you've yeah. got a smaller budget, then maybe you start with one of the services. Right. And then as you grow and the revenue is increasing, then you can you add on top of it. And because there's no annual contract, we're simply doing a website setup and then doing a monthly service fee to help you stay hosted and, and the privacy and the security and access to the tools. You'll save a lot of money that way in a month-to-month -month basis to then budget um, or allocate your budget in other areas versus a lot of programs have like a, an annual retainer type of fee or a contract. Uh, we're so confident in our services that we simply just go, you know, month to month as a way to do what's best for the business owner. And I think, you know, yeah. we're really consumer centric in, in that nature. Yes, very. All right. So, you know, next steps, Lisa, what would you suggest are some next steps for our uh, business owners that are guests on tonight? 
uh, definitely book a follow-up, uh, schedule an appointment so you can get your questions answered, take a closer look at a demo, uh, establish your account, your free account on shop and uh, become a web center client. So, yeah. Yeah, one of the things that you just alluded to is, is a demonstration appointment. Uh, we have a free uh, consultation and demonstration appointment. So talk to the person who invited you and we can schedule an appointment with one of our website specialists or a digital marketing specialist. They'll walk you through, you know, they'll listen to your needs, your business, uh, learn a little bit about it. They'll walk you through a, a demo of our services, answer questions and, and put together a package for you to consider and then follow up accordingly. Um, so it really is the best next step is to just take a, an evaluation of what we can do for your business. Um, but certainly at, at the very least, um, the person who invited you on can set you up with that free cash back account on shop.com and might be another way to get started. So um, if you are looking for more detailed information, we do have a website, mawebcenters.com that highlights all of the different services that you learned about this evening. Um, but I just want to thank you. I know that you've been on with us for uh, about 45 minutes, so I appreciate your time and attention. Uh, for the businesses that uh, plugged yourself in our chat, I appreciate that. We'll be giving you some yeah. shout outs and some promos as well through social media. Um, but lastly, Lisa, thank you so much for joining me this evening. It's been a pleasure in having your, you know, your personal expertise and your feedback from you and your clients uh, joining us this evening. Thank you so much for having me, Jason. It's been a pleasure to, to share, share this information with everyone. That is fantastic. Now, any final closing uh, thoughts in terms of, um, you know, reviews or testimonials or case studies of things that maybe uh, a client of yours has seen by using our services? Um, I, I, I love the e-commerce platform. I have a client that was able to set up her website um, very quickly um, and be ready last year um, for the Christmas shopping. So, um, and she's raving about it. She's really happy, was able to get up running and making money very, very quickly um, and do a lot of stuff herself. She entered all of her products herself when she learned the, the platform. And so I'm just a raving fan. I love it. I love it for my customers. I love it for uh, being able to utilize it myself to set up sites. So. Yeah, that's great. Well, yeah. thank you for the feedback. Thank you for joining us. And thank you all for joining us this evening. And uh, we'll be available for any questions. You can always email us at mawebcenters at marketamerica.com. I'll throw it in the chat real quick. mawebcenters at marketamerica.com. And apparently I need AI to help me do a chat online, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right. Have a great evening, everyone. Have a great evening. We'll see you soon on a demo. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.